Hello, my lovely viewers. Welcome to my studio. Painting shouldn't be hard or scary. Painting should fit your level of expertise. That's why today I will show you three different ways to paint a rose. I will start with the simplest technique, going through to just a little bit more complicated and then moving on to the most difficult way of depiction. So make sure to watch till the end to get the most out of this video. Don't forget to share your own experience in the comments. Okay, so let's start with the simplest one. For this, you would not need anything except for a nice round brush and some paint. You don't need any specific images, but it is always good to have a look for some inspiration at either real roses or photographs. It is entirely up to you which color you will use. You can use pink, yellow, red, completely up to you. This technique is as easy as putting down commas. So what you want to do is you want to place a comma on dry paper, putting a little dot and then a line. Next line will be from this side going inwards like that. You can make these lines a little bit closer to each other or a little bit further away. It is entirely up to you. Next line goes to overlap these two. So you see how these are kind of almost like a yin and yang kind of a shape, right? So next one is hugging both of them, starting thin, pressing, and releasing. And the next one again, starting thin, so barely touching the paper, pressing harder, and releasing. Same on the other side starting thin pressing a little bit more so you see how my brush is releasing more paint and then pulling it back up and releasing and you've got a perfect little petal when it comes to more of the sort of a middle and outer petals you can put them in any order that you like so i'm going to add another one here so thin pressing down and releasing it's up to you if you want to change the color as you go along or you want to keep it the same, but I'm just showing you the most simple version of this rose. Thin, pressing down and releasing. Thin, pressing down and releasing. If you are enjoying this video but feel that you would like to know more and watch more tutorials, make sure to check out my Patreon page. I already have quite a collection of different videos and tutorials on different subjects that you might find very interesting. We also do monthly giveaways, we do voting polls and so much more. So make sure to check it out and see which tier suits you the best. You can use darker colors on the inside and using lighter colors or maybe more yellowy colors. Um, again, it, it can be a lot of fun using this technique. You can make your petals wider as you go more towards the outside of the flower. To make them wider, you can either press on your brush a little bit stronger, but if your brush is not thick enough, you can always achieve that by double lining them like this. You can use different brushes and see how your results can vary. So here I'm going to do another one with the lighter pink. The main thing is that the petals overlap so that you're not putting them next to each other like you would with uh, any other regular flower. With roses you get that sort of interlocking where one is finishing but the other one, the next layer is already starting. So here is another rose. You can see this is what these roses look like side by side. Now let's put another little rose here on the side, maybe popping up from underneath these two. Because this is such a quick technique, it is fun to experiment with it. So grab a piece of paper, try different colors, try different thicknesses and different size roses. It's completely up to you. Even try doing it with a square brush and see how that looks. 
you might like the specific tricks that you can do with that. So here we go, we've got three roses. Now let's add some leaves. The leaves can also be done in a really, really simple way without anything too complex, pretty much using the same technique of pressing down and letting go. You might want to choose a green shade of your liking. You can even go for um, blue and even sort of a burgundy red, entirely up to you. Okay, so here we go, so I'm going to add a larger leaf again we're just using a tip of the brush not pressing too hard then pressing the brush against the paper and releasing it there we go we've got a we've got a leaf let's do a couple more but smaller in size as you can see it's quite a decorative way of painting roses this kind of painting is a perfect way for you to train your hand to use these round brushes and have a really good control over how you apply the paint. If you want to sort of complicate things a little bit more, you can even create little branches. So give it a little stem and then do a very similar thing of applying a few leaves. Have fun experimenting. It's the it's a wonderful thing to be able to do that. And here we go, our first type of a rose, which can be done by any beginner and can look absolutely beautiful. Remember to add your own additions. Perhaps you want to add a little bit of gold paint or iridescent paint or really completely to your liking. You can also do this technique with watercolor or acrylics or gouache it doesn't really matter okay and now technique number two it is still reasonably easy but if you are a total total beginner i would say experimenting a little bit with paint before you move on to this technique would be very beneficial this technique can also be done with different types of paint you can use gouache or watercolor or acrylic but if you are using acrylic or gouache make sure that you dilute the paint to make it quite runny now for this technique it is crucial that you use reasonably thick paper as we will be using some water again you can choose any color to your liking and go with it for this rose you might like to choose two or three different colors that sit very close to each other like for example red and orange or perhaps red and pink uh, up to you and I will show you why so here we go I'm going to use quite a dark red and see how I'm just creating again another little just a little sort of a spot then I'm applying close laying petals some of these can overlap a little bit but you still want to have a little bit of white paper showing through and next I'm going to move on to the lighter color so if this color that I was using here is quite a dark, almost burgundy red. Now I'm going to go for sort of a more of a true red. Have some of that darker color transfer into the lighter color because when if you're working on things and things are still wet, you can see how these things just run so easily and it is to your advantage in this technique. Now I'm going to apply some outer petals I'm going to take water on my brush and just let them run. Let the paint take control and have the freedom to flow. So you can connect some of these petals in some areas. I'm going to go grab a little bit of orange here and add another layer of lighter color. While this is all still wet, you can uh, feel free to add other colors, intensify some colors just by picking up an intense color and just dabbing a little bit of it in the areas that are still quite damp and letting, letting it run. You can see just how much more painterly this second 
type of technique is. Now here I'm going to create another rose just so that you can see that process again and maybe this time I'm going to do it from a little bit of a different viewpoint as well. In this rose I am using a little bit of orange and pink together. This color combination always makes me think of a really bright sunny day so it's quite a happy combination. And here we can do a little sort of a almost like a rose bud. Now let's move on to the greenery. I'm going to start with a very bright, very zingy green color. And again, in a very painterly manner, you can let colors flow into each other like that. Make sure that for this technique, paint that you use is reasonably watery. Now I'm going to move on to the darker green. I'm actually going to use a bluer green, which is called Prussian green, but you can just mix a little bit of blue with your green paint. And in some areas, go over and add a little bit more of the contrast. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of that dark, dark burgundy color and I'm just going to add a little bit of it on the leaves as well because roses, you know, they do tend to have that sort of a reddish tinge. So as you can see, this is a very painterly technique and you can really just go all out. It's very expressive, very free-flowing and a lot of fun to use. To finish everything off and bring even more sort of a fluffiness and lightness to this technique, I'm going to use a little bit of blue and add some of it on the background. And here we have this second really lovely painterly technique. Again, it is perfect for beginners but beginners that had a little bit of practice with paint. And here we go. This is the most complicated version of painting a rose. And this is the one that would take the longest to complete. Also for this artwork, you would need an image. You would need something to look at to draw quite a detailed outline drawing. If you are not very good at drawing, don't watch my drawing videos on the channel, <laughs> then perhaps you can transfer an image, which is also a quick way of having that drawing done. You would also want to use a good quality watercolor paper for this. So I'm using cold press 300 GSM watercolor paper. Very important to use good quality paper. If you don't, you might get very different results. The template of this drawing will be available on my Patreon page. Okay, so first things first, and I'm going to start by marking the dark areas within the rows. So here you have to be a little bit patient with this technique and you have to look at each petal separately. That is why it is so, so, so important to have an image in front of you so that you can take all the information you need from it. So I'm going to start from the top and keep working my way down. So only focusing on the darkest areas. We are not painting them as dark as they are, but we just want to Kind of like mark them or so. So the technique I'm using here is I'm applying some paint and while it is quite wet I am adding some water to soften it and I'm going to do the same thing with all of the petals. So this is pink and orange mixed together. If it is more comfortable for you or if you are working on a smaller sized rows, you can always use smaller brushes. Because it's such a slow process, this will probably take me an hour or so to complete this layer, I will speed it up 
in the video. I will be working on this rose with watercolor, but you can adjust your other media to suit this technique as well. So you can still keep using your gouache or acrylic paint. Just remember to use it in the watercolor technique. When you're painting, you want to pay a very, very close attention to which areas of each petal are darker and which ones are lighter. Also compare when petals are next to each other, which one on the edge appears to be darker and which one captures a little bit more light and therefore appears lighter. Some areas of the rose may appear more contrasted while some are less contrasted. These could be both natural variations of color and, of course, you know, shadow and light contrast. Okay, so now we have that first layer on this rose and we can wait for it to dry. Some parts already are dry, especially the ones I've started with and the other parts are still quite damp like these ones on the bottom here. So while this is all drying, I'm going to do one first layer on this little bud. Now the bud is a little bit whiter in color, so there wouldn't be as much of the intense colors as um, there are here on this rose. So for this uh, bud here, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow, orange, and a little bit of green here and there. And a very similar technique of applying the color on and then softening it up. There's another object there um, behind the rose and I, th I don't know if it's another petal or whatever it is. It has a little bit more pink in it. Maybe it's another little bud. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit on the background. The background is going to be quite dark and with a lot of rich greens um, and so on. So you can, of course, just leave the white background entirely up to you. But I want to place that color in just to see how much deeper we would need to go on the shadows on the actual roses. And now for this technique, you want to have plenty of water in your paint, but again, work on a dry background because you don't want things uh, leaking into the areas where you don't want them to go. Now these areas that I'm leaving here, these will be the green leaves.
you can introduce color variations you see how here i'm using lighter uh, green well i mean it's it's not very light but still lighter and as i go down i mix a little bit more blue and uh, black into it it is up to you what you want to do you can use really bright colors uh, i do for this one because the rose is so soft and so sunlit i want to create that contrast to really bring those colors up You can introduce patches of lighter color. And even create flowers on the background. So here is another patch that I can see it's not very it's quite a sort of a deep color but it's not very very bright so I can just use a little bit of the deepest color that I was using for painting the rose and let it sink in because it is further away you can merge it with the background And now I'm just going to finish up the rest of the green background. Okay, here we go. And you can see how important it is to put the background in while you haven't finished your flowers. So now we can have a look at this and we can see that we actually need to deepen some of the shadows there to still keep the contrast between the background and the rose itself we still want to use reasonably reddish co colors so for this i'm gonna again mix a little bit more of that deep sort of a pink which is a magenta color and some of the deep orange and go over some of the really really deep areas especially in the center of the flower because there are some really really nice deep but also very rich in color shades just few spots you don't want to outline the whole thing or it'll look super flat and quite cartoony and this is not the technique remember we did the first technique that's what we were kind of going for flat and decorative You can also see that I am using a smaller brush just to make it a little bit more convenient to go into these smaller areas. If you see little patterns or veins um, on the rose that you're working on, you can always put those through as well with a small brush. This is what it looks like at this stage but now we need to add different kind of a shadow everything here so far has been very red and we have been using the warm orangey color and the cool uh, sort of a pinkish the magenta shade but now we need to add shadows that are a little bit less intense in color so here I'm going to mix the colors that I was using on the flower with a little bit of green and blue, just tiny little bit to create this cooler shade. And I'm going to create these falling shadows.
Now if these have, because we went over the paint that we've had applied before, if you want to enhance these a little bit more with some brighter colors, you can always, always add extra colors in, especially while they're wet, it'll help, you know, the um, blurring. And here we go. Now let's have a look at it in terms of color. I really like those colors, but I would like to add a little bit more of that sort of a bright, bright yellow that you can see in the roses on a really nice sunny day. So here I'm going to go for a warm yellow. And very gently, only on some lighter areas, uh, you know, where we've been using a little bit of orange, just do these little, almost like little touches. So my brush is barely touching the paper, just like this. Little accents of the really nice sunny zinger day on the rose. Okay, so this is what we have so far. I'm also going to use a little bit of that color to just add a little bit of that yellowness on this little bud rose. But because this color is so strong, again, I'm just really softly and very quickly just giving little hints of it here and there. Now we can add just a little bit more definition to the other rows as well. We're not going to get into any kind of detail, but you do want to give it a little bit more of the shadow and light. Okay, now all we have left to do is to finish the green leaves on the rose and for that of course I'm going to use greens lighter than the background and I will be working on each leaf at a time using lighter and darker colors to really show the shape and the texture of the rose leaves. So with the leaves you don't want them to be overpowering or competing with the roses but at the same time you don't want them to be completely disappearing into the background so you want to show a little bit of the color that is somewhat lighter than the background but at the same time not too much detail because you don't want them to be the star of the show can add a little bit of yellow or blue or even red. Now as we come to the branches, the branches are predominantly brown, so you can do a brown sort of a wash, but they also have a little bit of you know green in them as well, so make sure you do that too. In some areas just popping a little bit of green and even a little bit of red and now let's look at these ones here so these ones here are part of this other rose and on the photograph that I'm working from I can see them quite clear so they're very sort of a quite sharp not super blurry not like the flower itself I guess because they must be closer to us so here we go we can add some of that and a little bit of detail of course they're not as defined as for example the you know the other petals but we can still put them in.
Okay, now uh, we have to finish up this little bit here. So I will go over the leaves and then we'll see if we need to add anything to the flower itself. So again, starting with the lighter, warmer tone. Now with the darker green, I'm going to add shadows and contrast, especially because we've got some of these green leaves going over the big rows. And as always, we can merge these two colors. You can do the same on the other ones. And now because everything is so dark, I'm going to use a little bit of lighter color to just give the edges of these little um, leaves a little bit more contrast. Okay, so this is pretty much done. I just want to add a little bit more definition to this little, um, but I'm not going to do too much work on it because this rose is our main feature. But still, just adding a little bit more shadows. Okay, so here we go. This is what it looks like when it's finished. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments which one is your style of artwork or is more comfortable for you depending on your level of skill. Do let me know. It will be a great way for me to know what kind of tutorials to do for you guys in the future. I hope you get a good use out of this one. And remember to check out the Patreon page uh, with more videos, more tutorials and more fun things. And of course, I would like to thank all of my wonderful patrons that are supporting this channel, uh, that are helping me to choose subject matters for the videos and so on. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you all have a lovely, lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to check out more videos from my channel to learn more things about drawing and painting.